Welcome to a new vlog, it's product review time again and this time we're taking a closer look at a 10 inch monitor with HDMI input. This is the box it comes in and the monitor has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. That's about 2K resolution in the scheme of things and it has a pixel density of 300 pixels per inch. This is a uh, 16 by 10 aspect ratio which I'm a fan of. My desktop monitor is uh, also 16 by 10 and it works so much better for everyday activities but especially if you're doing any CAD design work. This is an IPS panel so we should have good brightness, contrast and colors. It's rated at 400 candela per square meter and we also get uh, a couple of built-in speakers and the HDMI input supports video and audio so you should be able to get video and sound through one HDMI cable and that's useful because the Raspberry Pi for example and any other computer for that matter should be able to output audio over HDMI. We have two inputs in here we have HDMI and DisplayPort but I think this monitor will be really useful when attached to a Raspberry Pi or any other single board computer and they all feature HDMI outputs. Also on this side we have the uh, DC input port, it accepts 12 volts. We also have a USB 5 volts uh, output via a uh, USB type C connector and a 3.5 millimeter jack for headphones output. On the top we have switches for controlling the settings menu via the on-screen display and on the back we have mounting holes uh, because inside the box they include uh, this mounting accessory. It seems they offer a uh, double-sided adhesive strip for attaching this but I would uh, prefer attaching it with screws. Uh, this seems to have uh, some kind of uh, tripod mount and is adjustable in one direction but you also get a uh, similar tripod uh, mount right on the bottom of the, the screen so you could attach this directly to a uh, tripod or you could attach this to the back of the screen or you can screw this into the uh, tripod adapter and use it like a regular uh, monitor stand. Inside the box they also include a regular HDMI cable and a uh, USB Type-C cable. I don't think I will be using any of the mounting accessories because I plan to use this only for debug, not for a permanent installation. Uh, but I can imagine someone building a particular project where it would need a permanent installation. And I think I did enough talking about the uh, uh, features of this monitor. Let's power this on and show some images. It's too bad that the uh, protection film actually goes under this uh, bevel so I'm gonna have to take this apart to remove the uh, protection film. I just can't stand that protection film on the monitor so uh, just give me a few seconds to remove this. So I have my Raspberry Pi 4 here. It's connected via a micro HDMI to regular HDMI cable to the monitor and I must tell you I had to edit some settings on the uh, Raspberry Pi before this video in order to get it to display something over HDMI because out of the box it wasn't showing anything. But I, I won't go into this right now because it's not the topic of the video. This is the full 2560 by 1600 pixels resolution on the Raspberry Pi desktop. Everything is really crisp at this uh, pixel density. Now you can really get a feel of how this uh, resolution looks like on this tiny 10 inch monitor. Even though it looks uh, very nice and crisp up close for normal desktop activities it's almost unusable because of the very small text and icons. If you're building some custom interface, a GUI for showing some video content it might work for you but for general purpose desktop use this is too much for me. Uh, the text is really small and I need to get really close to the screen to actually read any text so I will probably be running this at a lower resolution. There is also a 1920 by 1080 version of this monitor in the same 10 inch form factor and that one actually has a higher brightness 
than this one. It has a rating of 500 candela per square meter. So after testing this higher resolution model, I can probably recommend you to get just the full HD version of the monitor because those extra pixels are not really usable for everyday activities. I've checked the power consumption and the monitor takes about 350 milliamps at 12 volts with 50% brightness and about 430 milliamps with 100% brightness. That's about 4.2 watts and 5.2 watts. So it should be possible to use this remotely, power it from a battery pack if required. There is a simple OSD menu which you can control with the switches present on the top side of the monitor. You can adjust brightness, contrast, you can select the input HDMI or display port, the color temperature if you want it colder or warmer, just the basic monitor settings, nothing too advanced. I've tested the audio output and it works. And if you're using this on a Raspberry Pi, you can uh, select where you want to output audio by right clicking the audio icon. In my case, uh, it's uh, the HDMI 2 port and audio quality is not great on this uh, monitor, but it's good enough to debug a system or to present some confirmation sounds to a user performing an action. I'm not sure on the rating of that 5 volts USB output because uh, it could be interesting if it could power the Raspberry Pi safely. You wouldn't need an additional adapter just for the Pi. Normally, just to be on the safe side, you would need a 2 amp capable 5 volt socket, but the Pi doesn't take 2 amps for normal tasks, so you could get away with less. I just wouldn't want to overheat something inside the monitor, so it would be best to check what kind of regulator they have in there before committing to long term usage of that output port. This video would not be complete without a teardown of this monitor. Luckily, it's held together with a bunch of screws and just two plastic clips so it was easy to take apart. The construction is pretty rudimentary, the LCD panel is held with a bunch of clips screwed on the side. Here is the part number of the panel for those who are interested. On the back side we have the two speakers held in with the same clips and our driver board. Here is a close-up of the driver board, it's pretty much a single chip solution that handles the interface between the different inputs and the LVDS output to the monitor. There is plenty of free space inside this monitor enclosure, so you could mount a Raspberry Pi Zero in here, maybe even a full-sized Raspberry Pi. You would just need to add some ventilation holes. I wouldn't recommend inserting a Raspberry Pi 4 though, because, well, we all know it suffers from overheating issues. I'm pretty happy with how this uh, display works, it has pretty good specs and besides the main purpose that I want to use it to debug various systems that output video, I can't stop thinking about how you could build a very compact system using one of these monitors and the Raspberry Pi Zero powered directly from inside the monitor. You could then embed that into a wall and make it a smart home control center or a smart alarm user interface. And as, we, as we've seen in the teardown, there is plenty of space to insert more than a Raspberry Pi Zero inside the uh, shell of this monitor. The possibilities are endless and it's great that we have the option of getting these monitors relatively cheap these days. I'll put links in the description to both the high resolution and the low resolution model. Like I said earlier, you don't really need the high resolution model for normal day to day tasks. I will also put a link to a micro HDMI to normal HDMI cable because you will need one of those to connect to the Raspberry Pi. That was all for today, don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon, as always I appreciate your feedback left in the comments, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.